So what we have here is a double inclined plane and there are two masses M1 and M2 lying on these two inclined planes. What's also given is the angle theta 1 and theta 2 which is the angle of inclination of the two planes. Now it's given that mass M2 is sliding down and therefore M1 is sliding up in this direction. And what we've been asked to find is a tension T in the cord which is connecting mass M1 and M2. And like I've said earlier, most problems can be solved if you label all the forces correctly, resolve them correctly, and then you sum up all the forces in the respective directions and you equate them with the product of mass and acceleration induced by the net force, essentially apply Newton's second law of motion. If you can do this, most problems are similar and can be solved very quickly. So let's once again go ahead and apply this method. And to do that, we label all the forces first. As given, it's a frictionless plane and there's no friction involved in this problem. So we can clearly see that there is a force M to G acting in the downward direction. Let's go ahead and label this force as M to G in the downward direction. And you would see that it would have a vertical component and a horizontal component. So its vertical component would be this. You would see that if this is angle theta 2, this would also be angle theta 2. And you can also label the horizontal component of force M to G, which would be nothing but this. And it would act in this direction. And therefore, if we label these forces, what we get is this m to g sine theta acting in this direction sine theta 2 and you have a force m to cos theta 2 acting in this direction and we know that the normal reaction would be same as m to cos theta 2 because the mass is not moving in upward direction or along the y-axis Likewise, we can label all the forces acting on mass M1 and we can see that it has M1G acting in downward direction and have a horizontal component which would be this and it will have a vertical component which would be this. And if this is angle theta 1, this would also be angle theta 1. And if this is the case, then the force acting in this direction would be M1G sine theta 1 and this force, the vertical component of M1G would be M1G cos theta 1. And once again, we can say that the normal reaction here would be same as M1G cos theta 1. Because once again, this mass is not moving along the y-axis. It's stationary and therefore the two forces should be equal. Now, let's also assume the axes we are dealing with are like this. So you have this as the x-axis and this as the y-axis. And we'll assume that any vector pointing in this direction is positive and any vector pointing in this direction is negative. Likewise, for this mass M2, again, we'll take this as the x-axis and this as the y-axis and we'll assume any vector pointing in this direction as positive and any vector pointing in this direction as negative. So now let's go ahead and apply Newton's second law of motion to mass m1. We can see that there is tension T in the string and let's label it as T and it's a pulling force which is pulling the mass M1 up. Likewise, we have tension T also on this side of the string because it's a single string on a frictionless pulley. And let's label this also. This is also a pulling force, which is pulling mass M2 in the upward direction. So if we apply Newton's second law of motion, which says that the net force acting on a body is equal to the product of its mass and the acceleration induced. So let's see what is the net force acting on mass M1. We can see one force acting on it is tension T. And we'll take it as positive because any vector pointing in this direction has to be taken as positive. And the other force acting on it is M1G sine theta 1, which is acting in downward direction. So we'll take it as negative M1G sine 
theta 1. And this should equal to the product of mass, which is m1, into the acceleration. Remember, acceleration is still unknown. Likewise, we can write a similar equation for mass m2, and we can see that tension t is acting in upward direction, and m to g sine theta 2 is acting in downward direction. And this should equal to the product of mass m2 into the acceleration. But remember, acceleration here is in downward direction, and therefore it has to be taken as negative. Now, once you have these two equations, we can label these equations as equation 1 and equation 2. And if we subtract 2 from 1 and solve for a, what we get is a a equals g times m2 sine theta 2 minus m1 sine theta 1 divided by m1 plus m2 because you see tension t cancels off when you're subtracting and you get a neat derivation for acceleration a and once you have the value of acceleration a you can substitute this value in either of the equations so let's go ahead and substitute it in equation 1 and what you will get is tension t minus m1 g sine theta 1 is equal to m1 into the acceleration will take the value of a which we've calculated over here and if you rearrange the terms and solve for t what you'll get is t is equal to g m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 whole term multiplied by sine theta 1 plus sine theta 2. Now a couple of things you might want to notice is that this mass would move down only if this component m2 g sine theta 2 is greater than m1 g sine theta 1 because tension is an internal force so this force has to be greater than this force for the mass to move down in fact if if m2 g sine theta 2 is equal to m1 g sine theta 1 both the masses would be stationary and they would not move and you can clearly see in this equation uh, where we have derived a if m2 sine theta 2 equals m1 sine theta 1, acceleration automatically becomes 0.